Hello, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Visual Studio Code with Node.js. I'm Rami Sayar, and with me is Stacey Mulcahy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> are you with me? <laughs> I'm with you. I'm fully with you this <laughs> oh, morning. Awesome. <laughs> and, oh, wait, already. There's, there's, already. A, there's the one, the first, the first awesome counter. <laughs> uh, no, that's two now. Wait, what, where is the awesome cat? Anyways. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Oh, there we go. Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about Node.js, and uh, we're going to be using this really, really awesome new tool called Visual Studio Code. For those of you who have come from another background, perhaps maybe using Sublime or some other uh, editors, you're going to find yourselves really, really excited about this tool. It's, it's going to be amazing. It's beautiful. It is. It, it is, is beautiful. I actually beauty. like it's now yeah. my, my go-to tool every single time I code. Um, so yeah, a little bit about us. Hi, Stacy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm Stacy Mulcahy. I'm a technical evangelist out of New York City. Uh, I focus mostly on the web stack, so HTML, JavaScript. Um, I dabble in the IoT uh, design and UX. Um, you know, so I, I talk about all those things, and sometimes I cover uh, even marketing. You can find me on Channel 9, uh, doing lots of random things across the board. My name is Rami, and uh, I'm actually from Montreal, so if there's any Canadians online tonight, please, please, please put some, uh, some chat, uh, some A's in the, in the chat. Some maple, definitely, syrup. Uh, some maple syrup as well, if you can find a way to do that. Uh, that would be great. Uh, so actually, my focus is very similar to... Um, Stacy's. I focus on the web, HTML5, uh, Node, uh, and right now I'm super into Microsoft Edge, working on uh, getting those uh, web standards uh, uh, there and, and showcasing some of the really cool stuff we could do with Microsoft Edge. Uh, in Montreal, I like to help out um, different developer communities. I speak at a lot of different conferences, and I work a lot with startups as well. And if you're curious about some of the stuff that I've been working on, it's all on MSDN. So. That's definitely uh, the place to go if you're interested in HTML5 articles, Node.js articles. It's all up there. So today we're going to be covering a bunch of different things in terms of Node and uh, kind of showing you uh, Visual Studio Code and some of the features of Visual Studio Code. And so what we're going to be covering today is we're going to be doing an introduction to Node.js. So this is going to be taking you through the very beginning of Node.js. We're going to talk a little bit about you know, introduction to Express, a very popular framework that you end up using with Node. Um, we're going to talk about Express and databases. We're going to also be doing a little bit of the front end for your Express uh, web apps, you know, explaining things like Bootstrap a little bit and Jade and how they kind of relate to Node and Express. Uh, we're going to go through debugging and deploying Node.js, and we're also going to be talking a little bit about, okay, you've been using this mostly throughout the day to build websites. We're going to talk a little bit about how can you actually build something that's like a, you know, like a, a cron job or an Azure web job, and, and how can we call it continuously, and what kind of things can you do there? So, you know, having a little bit of fun, I think, towards the end of the day in terms of uh, expanding your knowledge. Yeah. Uh to set some expectations, uh, ideally, you guys might have had some experience with web development. Uh, if you're a web designer who knows HTML5, CSS, you'll feel right at home. We're going to walk you through uh, Node.js straight from the beginning. Uh, so if you've seen or used or played around with JavaScript, you'll be great. Uh, and of course, any developers with experience using other service-side languages like Python, PHP, Ruby, uh, you'll actually really enjoy this uh, tutorial today. Uh, now, of course, there are some great, great um, other resources out there. Among them, uh, Mastering Node, which is this free book that you can find online. And uh, if you're curious about how to set up Node.js on your Windows machine, or if you just want to read a very lengthy article that explains all the different pieces of Node.js, uh, you can go to that short link at the bottom, aka.ms node-101. Uh, node uh, and it will be a great um, uh, article for you. So again, taking this course, you can earn some points. And so if you enter the code Node.js Visual Studio, and that's going to expire on the 30th of August, um, you can get your points, 50 MVA points for this. Um, and you know, again, this is going to kind of be a follow-up to our previous one that we did. So this is going through a little bit more of visual code. So get your, get your MVA points while you can, I guess. Yeah. The best way to put it. All right. Let's get started. So introduction to Node.js. I guess in this module, what we're going to cover is uh, the basics of Node. What is Node? Uh, when was it started? Uh, we're going to show you how to set up your environment if you're on a Windows machine, if you're on a Linux distribution, or even on o o OS X. We'll uh, 
we'll uh, show you how to get that started up and running. Uh, and then we're going to build our first Node application. So we're going to walk through um, the different parts of Node and how it's a little bit different from JavaScript. And then uh, once we've got a couple of great applications uh, that we've built, we're going to talk a little bit about the Node Package Manager, which is phenomenal. It's it, the, 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 the single thing that I like the most about the Node community, it's the Package Manager, seeing all of these packages out there and helping you build your projects really fast and really quickly. It's magic. It is. It is magic. It's like all of a sudden we've got uh, all of these things that like just do half the work for you. <laughs> but really, the, your job at that point is to just make sure that the packages work correctly and to put them together. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. Um, now, if you want to check out some of the code that we're going to be playing with today, uh, it's actually on a uh, GitHub repo already. So you can go get it uh, right there. Um, you, you might want to pay attention. So as we're doing the tutorials, we're going to be going through uh, uh, all the different folders, but we're going to be uh, perhaps jumping between some of the folders. Uh, and just pay attention during the video so that you know which folder we're actually in. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so why don't we get started? Yeah, let's all do right. this. So let's talk about Node first. Uh, what is Node? Ah, it's like you're asking me the ultimate question. <laughs> uh, you know, Node.js is a runtime environment and library for running JavaScript applications outside the browser. And uh, the nutshell, that means that if you're a JavaScript developer and you're used to doing something on the front end, you now can take that knowledge and start doing things on you know, server-side or back end. Um, yep. Node is mostly used to run real-time server applications and uh, shines through its performance using non-blocking I.O. and asynchronous events. Yeah, and that's actually really powerful because traditionally that's been always a complex way to build applications, like real-time applications. You know, you had to have this loop of some sort that was keeping track of time and whatnot, and it, it was fairly complicated, but Node makes it fairly straightforward, I think. I think that's one of the beauties of Node is, again, we were talking a little bit about package managers and things like that, is that if you've never touched it before and you come to it, you start to realize, oh, there's all these things, there's all these Lego building blocks that I can start to use and just plug yeah. in and play. And, and so, like, for me, that's one of the great things coming to Node. Yeah, so um, Node, if you, if you haven't uh, ever seen it before, it's, um, it, it's a great uh, platform and it uses JavaScript and it's uh, most predominantly used on the server side. But now we're seeing it more in IoT devices, pretty much all over the place. Anytime that uh, um, you're seeing different platforms, even for mobile apps, you're, you're starting to be able to use JavaScript there. Uh, now, what's really cool about uh, Node and JavaScript, if you're building for the web, is that you really have a unified development environment and the same language. Um, now, Node itself, all right, we, we've said that it's a, it's a uh, platform that uses JavaScript, and um, essentially it came about because uh, JavaScript, uh, which for a long time was fairly slow, has finally been becoming high performance. And in fact, lots of different browsers have very high performance uh, JavaScript engines. And that's what really allowed us to take uh, JavaScript from the browser front end side and actually put it on the back end where it's able to handle the load. Uh, and uh, in Node in particular, it actually uses the V8 uh, JavaScript engine. And uh, Node itself was created uh, in 2009 by Ryan Dahl, and it's op an open source technology. So you can go uh, check out all the code that's behind Node. You can see its evolution over time. And uh, it runs on Windows, Linux, OS X. It pretty much runs everywhere, actually, uh, including little IoT devices like Raspberry uh, Pis and whatnot. Yeah. Now, you might think, like, hey, I, I went to the Node page, and like, what is this zero point something, <laughs> like, virgin number? Like, what, what is this? Uh, well, yeah. I, I guess you could say that Node is in beta phase. You can but like, say that for a lot of things. But you can say that though. for, yeah, like it, a lot yeah. of things you could say that for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but really, it's actually been used in production in so many different places now that uh, you cannot call it beta. But like, I guess it's not 1.0 yet because people still want to, the developers still want to change things, be flexible, and, and really uh, help the language and platform evolve quickly. Um, so if you're wondering, like, well, when do I actually use Node? Yeah, when do I use it? Tell yeah. me. Tell so, me. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> Node is great for streaming or event-based real-time applications. And we mentioned this earlier. But like, what does that actually mean? 
I don't know, tell me. Okay, it means <laughs> things like chat applications, right? right. Those are event-based. There's a chat that was sent, chat that was received. Right. Uh, they have to be real-time as well, in the sense that if you're chatting with someone, you can't wait like 10 minutes to get the next chat. Yeah, or have to refresh the browser, you know, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, what are you doing there? Yeah. <laughs> Give me your message. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I are see you, you typing. Are you still there? Are you I still see there? you typing. <laughs> um, it, you can also use it for real-time applications. So think like, um, Anything that requires uh, some, some type of data flow constantly going back and forth. So if, let's say that you're building, I don't know, finance to websites or something. Right, uh, or like a... In, in stock tickers or something. Or even a shared conference environment yeah, even a or something conference. where someone's you know, doing something at the same time as you and you have to make sure you're not overriding it or whatnot. But. Yeah, and, and there's lots of people that are building um, collaborative environments on the web with Node.js and That's JavaScript. That's a better way to put it, yeah. Yeah, collaborative <laughs> environments, things that people, where people work together. Yeah. Yeah, multiple browsers talking at the same time to the servers and all this information flowing around. <laughs> um, that also brings up the idea of game servers, right? Yeah. Right, so. Yeah. Multi-user, yeah. Multi-user games. Yeah. Um, you can also, you have all, you'll also see it perhaps in ad servers that, you know, have to ha do this um, high volume uh, amount of requests. Right. Uh, streaming servers as well. Um, so it's, it's really great when you need high levels of concurrency. So when you have lots and lots and lots of uh, small things happening at the same time. Gotcha. Um, but uh, you don't need as much hard CPU power. Right. Like no, no hard CPU power. You don't need like uh, to do these complex math calculations that you know, take like 10 seconds even on our very advanced hardware. Um, yeah. You know, that, that's probably not where you want to use Node, right? Yeah. But for everything else that's related to the web where you've got high concurrency needs, where you've got lots and lots of users happening, lots of events happening at the same time, and you still want to be real time, Node, I think, is the best tools, one of the best tools that's out there right now. Um, and of course, it's great for just writing JavaScript code everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just, I mean, why wouldn't you want to have it everywhere? Yeah, like it's. it's uh, Taken over. It is. It's like it's <laughs> everywhere. And uh, it, if you're wondering, like, where is it in the wild? Well, uh, we use it at Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, in fact, a lot of our uh, Azure cloud tools are, are built with Node. Yep. Um, there's other companies out there. Uh, what's interesting is that some of them are also contributing to the Node community. Lots of open source uh, uh, packages that are being produced by different companies around the around the world, and they are uh, all being open source, which is absolutely phenomenal for the Node community. Yeah, and you're starting to see even like SDKs are, you know. Um, maybe considering Node as one of the first things that they're creating an SDK for, or whatever it may be along those lines. So, you know, it's being embraced by everyone. Yeah, and speaking of that community, it's huge now. <laughs> it's huge. Oh, man. It, it's like, I, I mean, these stats are probably out of date now. They're totally out of date. <laughs> totally yeah. out of date. Uh, but like the, the last time that we had collected um, uh, stats for our, our, our slides, um, there was over 2 million downloads per month. It's probably a lot more than that now. Uh, Last a major version release, 0 0.10, there was 20 million downloads of that. Uh, over 81,000 modules on NPM. So uh, these are over, over um, like th that means that there's over 81,000 pieces of code that you can use in your application. That now, saves you time. It saves you time. Ideally. I, yeah, and, but like, of course I haven't seen any um, Node application use all 81,000. <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> I like how you just threw that down there. <laughs> I'm just like, if you can build an app that <laughs> legitimately uses every single module that's out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I 50 will, more MVA points for 50 you. 50 more MVA points, <laughs> yes. Uh, and of course, there's plenty of meetups around the world. Yeah. Um, Stacy, you're in New York, and there's yeah. probably we, several Node meetups. Yeah, we have on. a bunch. Uh, and, and they are, again, quite regular um, once a month. And we discuss, like, all sorts of things across from Node, and we mentioned like different things that you might use it for, and, and some people might use it more as a utility to do, you know, things off the command line. Some people are building like a full and you know backend server websites, that kind of thing. Uh, a lot of IoT stuff. So it's interesting because you're really seeing um, it kind of, uh, you know, expand where people are using it. And so I think that's the most interesting thing for me, um, watching the community grow, at least in the past couple of years, for sure. Yeah, and it's the same story in Montreal. We've seen a lot. Uh, a huge community grow around Node. Lots of startups are using Node.js as their main stack. Yeah. Uh, and it's just it's just phenomenal. Lots of contributions, lots of people, lots of players. Everyone's really happy when there's a big community, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that means you're going to get your answer. Yeah, yeah. basically. When, yeah. You got, when you got a question, yeah. you have lots of people locally who can guide you through that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm in Montreal, so if you're ever interested in, in talking about Node, just feel free to tweet at me. And uh, yeah, go. so let's let's get started. Let's start with setting up your environment. environment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you're on Windows, 
Um, there's a couple ways that you could do it. You could go straight to nodejs.org and download these uh, installer files. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we'll install the Node.js binaries for you. That's how I do it. Um, if you want to build it yourself, you also can. Yeah. Uh, although that's a little bit more complicated. If you're a uh, purist. If you're a pu yeah, absolutely. Yep. If, you, if, you, uh, if you need to compile things. <laughs> the need. The need, yeah. There's, <laughs> if there's a need to compile things, uh, I don't know, maybe you're looking at an excuse to do some sword fighting in the meantime while it's compiling. <laughs> uh, you can definitely do that as well. Uh, if you use uh, Chocolaty, which is like a package manager for Windows, uh, you can do uh, Choco install Node.js dot install and, and it should uh, install Node.js for you. One thing to uh, keep in mind, and so something that I always recommend you double checking, uh, if you've got uh, Node installed and uh, ideally you want to have Node the executable file in your path, yeah. uh, so you got to make sure that it's actually in the system environment variable. And I, I left a little link there for a YouTube video that shows you how to get to your environment variables uh, in Windows 8 and 8.1. Uh, with 10 launching today. 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 Uh, you'll, you'll also want to do that as well. Uh, and just make sure that uh, this variable, this uh, path at the bottom right here of the slides, uh, program files, whatnot, is in your path variable. So yeah. that, that way, when you're in the command line trying to execute some node apps, uh, it'll actually find node. Uh, hey, let's say that you're not running Windows. Uh, if you're on uh, uh, a Linux distribution, perhaps uh, Ubuntu, it's a very famous and popular yep. one. Uh, there, there's, it's also the, the same, similar to, uh, to Windows. The easiest way to install it is uh, with a package manager. Uh, and uh, we've got the command right up there. Uh, you probably also want to install some of the compilers and, and build essential tools, because uh, there's a couple of node modules that do use uh, some more native stuff. So yeah. uh, you'll want to run both of these commands, uh, app get uh, install build dash essential, and then again for Node.js and NPM. Yep. Uh, let's say you're on OS X. Um, again, the easiest way to do it is via the terminal using uh, the brew package manager. Uh, it's also how I do it as well. Uh, and uh, let's say that you don't want to, you can always compile it from source or use the installer on nejs.org. So let's kind of get down to the very first initial Node application. Yay, moving on. Yeah. Hello, All Node. All right, so uh, basically, with every single language and every single platform, the first thing that you want to do is just say hello world. Or hello right? node. Or hello node. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to our code editor. And we're using Visual Studio Code. And uh, this is a, 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 the uh, best uh, editor, in my opinion. And you can run it on OS X, Linux, Windows. I'm running it on Windows here, but you can run it on your own platform as well. Uh, node will work everywhere as well. So. Uh, let's get right down to it. So here I am. I've already got my uh, folder open. This is the same Node NVA folder that uh, you will get when you go to GitHub. All right. So if you get this um, clone to your computer, you'll actually you're actually able to open up the whole folder straight into in Visual Studio Code. And the first thing that you want to go to is the app.js file in the 01 Hello World folder. Um, and this is pretty much how you do Hello World. It's quite simple. You just want to print it out. You can say console.log Hello World. Very similar to how you would do it in the browser. Sure. So instead of going into the inspector and right-clicking and seeing it, yeah. this is actually going to you know, pop up. This is going to pop it up. So when I run it, uh, so I'm going to open up my terminal here. And did I lose my keyboard? I hope not. No. OK, here it is. Uh, let's say that I wanted to uh, go into that folder first. Uh, to run it, uh, this very simple uh, app.js file, I just type in node app.js, execute, and there we go. Hello world. Yay! Success! <laughs> Success! This is awesome! Okay, we're done. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, now, let's, let's say that uh, you know, we wanted to actually do something uh, a little bit more relevant, right? I yeah. mean, Node is a web platform technology, right? Let's yeah. say we wanted to do uh, a basic, make a basic HTTP server that will then do Hello World and send that to our browser. Ooh, leveling yeah. it up. Yeah, we're just Plus gonna, one. Plus one, right? OK, so uh, let's go back to the code here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a second folder. And I'm going to walk you through every single line here. Uh, and it, with a couple of lines, uh, this is about six, you're actually able to respond to an HTTP request, uh, reply with a 200 OK that this is a, a good request, uh, and uh, write hello world back in the response. So uh, the first thing that you'll notice is that in line one, we've got this uh, require function. And if you're coming from the browser world, you probably have never seen this before. It's a little odd, right? What does it do? Um, well, basically, it actually gets a module for you. 
I just always want to ask you the question, what does it do? What does it do? Tell me, <laughs> tell me more. Um, so it actually will load up a module, and in this case, the module is HTTP. Right. right? And in this module, there is a um, um, bunch of different servers, clients for HTTP uh, protocols. Right. Uh, so the, the way that uh, packages work, and we'll cover this uh, a little bit later, is that uh, once you require something, it will return everything that's exported uh, in uh, into a variable. And in this case, we're sending it to HTTP. Do you think we uh, could make the font just a little bit bigger? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, th I'm, I'm going to do that right now for you. I'm just going to try to remember how to actually do that. You can zoom in too. OK, well, maybe we should run zoom it. We're just going to make that a little bit bigger so that, you, so that we can read it. Oh, OK. There, there we go. go. Is that better? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we got the thumbs up. That means it's better. OK, great. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's take a look at this a little bit more. Um, we've got the require. It's put a bunch of modules and functions into HTTP. right? And uh, if we want to call some of these functions, um, we can just use the HTTP variable. And obviously, the first thing that we'll want to do is perhaps create a server for uh, responding to our HTTP requests. Ooh, let's right? do it. So in line three, if you uh, can see right there, we're going to say HTTP.createServer. And we're going to pass in a function. Now, this is a callback. Um, and we'll cover callbacks in, in a few seconds. But essentially, what this uh, will do is that for every single HTTP request our server gets, it's going to execute this function. And this function is going to be passed two parameters, uh, two arguments, uh, request and response. Right? So uh, once, uh, let's say that uh, we did get a request. Um, well, the thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to respond um, with a 200 OK. So we're going to say response.write the header of our HTTP response uh, with uh, the status 200. And uh, we're going to specify the content type text plane. Now, uh, if you've ever taken a look, a look at an HTTP header, uh, you, you would have seen um, uh, there's plenty of other headers that you can put. And with this object here, you can actually specify a lot of them. But for our case, we're just going to use text plane. Normally, you'll want to use HTML, of course, if you're sending HTML back. Uh, but in our case, we're going to keep it very, very simple and just use plain text. And uh, before we end the response, we're going to say, hey, response.end, hello world. Uh, once this is done, this is going to send a response back to our browser that's going to then uh, basically display hello world, ideally. And um, now the thing is, when we create this server, we actually don't tell it to start yet. We've got to tell it to start um, by calling the listen function. So, uh, HTTP.createServer is going to return an, an, uh, an object that we're going to put in the variable server. And then right here at line 8, we're going to go server.listen, pass in the port number that we want it to listen to, uh, 7000. And then uh, if we get this started and we hit uh, our local host on port 7000, it should say hello world. Ooh, so, it's like the moment of truth. The moment of truth. Let us do it. So I'm back in my command prompt, and I'm going to go out and go into our second folder right here and do a node app.js again, and nothing has happened. And that is actually the correct behavior, because if we pay attention at the top, node.app.js is still running. Um, now, what we'll want to do is we'll want to open up our browser. All right. And we opened this page. Let's say that we're going to go to 7,000 right there. Boom! Hello world. Can you believe that? This is awesome. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I'm going to open up this tool just to show you a, a little thing right here. Uh, if I go into my network tab and uh, I'm going to refresh this, there you go. It actually did send text plain. Nice. With the 200 status, which is exactly what we were doing. Perfect. Awesome. So all it did, all, we did all of that in six lines of code. Yeah. And, yeah. It's and that's. Uh, uh, that's one of the, part of the magic, I guess, of Node. Like you can do so much uh, web stuff in very few lines of code. Yeah, very I mean, good for programming productivity. Requiring that module, the module does all the work for you. You just have to understand how to yeah. like leverage it, and that's you'll that's going to be a theme throughout. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're going to show you how to use some of those popular modules as well. Um, so now let's. Uh, I guess we, we we touched on a couple of interesting things like a callback. Yeah. Uh, there's some events and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about uh, event-driven programming. Event-driven programming. I love that. So event-driven programming, you know, and just on the screen you'll see programming paradigm in which the flow of the program is determined by events. 
you know, such as user uh, actions. We're kind of used to this. I mean, especially if you're dealing with JavaScript, you're very used to capturing a click or understanding when there's a mouse enter or any of those kind of things. And so that's very much, you know, along the lines of, of what we're doing here in terms of events that we can listen to, a stream starts, it closes, that kind of thing. Yeah, an HTTP request got sent. Uh, that's an event as well. Um, and now you'll, you'll You'll notice that uh, we never actually started an event loop, perhaps. Like, there, how, did, how does this event system get started, right? Um, well, it turns out that Node provides uh, the event loop as part of the language. So uh, with Node, you never need to call start to the loop at all. And uh, the way that it works is that the loop uh, starts, and then it doesn't end until the last callback is complete. So if you have a callback, uh, like we did when we created our server for HTTP. Uh, and as long as there is at least one callback, the event loop will continue uh, executing, and uh, the, the program, the node won't, won't stop. Right. Right. So um, the other thing that you need to know as well about this event loop is it's all run under a single thread. So if you do some very long operations, like let's say a, a very complex math calculation or something as simple as just saying sleep yeah. for 10 seconds, yeah. you're actually going to halt uh, the event loop and prevent all the other callbacks from being executed. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to bring some other interesting topics out as well. Like, how, how do we write code that doesn't block the event loop? Because um, ideally, you want uh, the event loop to be fairly clear uh, so that you can handle thousands of different events at the same time. Right. Uh, and uh, anything that's blocking that takes too long, we want to put that off to the side. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what blocking I.O. is. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, here I have a very simple example. And uh, the way that I'm explaining it is by using some actual code. So you can see what it looks like. You can try it out yourself. Um, what we're doing here is we just want to read this file called package.json, which mm -hmm. we'll also talk about a little bit more in detail uh, further on. Yep. Uh, but it's uh, for now, just assume it's a regular text file. Um, now, if we wanted to read something in uh, Node, uh, we're going to have to require a module. And in right. this case, fs, which is file system. Um, we're going to say, hey, require file system. Uh, put it in this variable var fs, uh, fs, we're going to say read the file. Right. All right we're going to call it a read file function. Standard I.O., like standard st file I.O. Standard I.O., IO yep. uh, it's going to read the whole file before it does anything. Right. Uh, and this is going to be, uh, the way that we specify if it's a blocking I.O. is by having the sync at the end, so synchronous. Right. And this is going to come in a little later, asynchronous versus synchronous. Right. Uh, and um, now, if you look at this line of code, what it'll do is it'll actually read um, the file synchronously, and then convert it to a string that's going to put into the variable content, and then we're going to print out that content. So the, the code is actually in the repo if you want to try it out. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit instead about how we do that same type of operation in a way that doesn't block. Right. Because, I mean, if, if it's you doing it the previous way, you're waiting. You've yep. got nothing. There's no input. It's, yep. it, you're blocked out completely. Let, let's say that file was a gigabyte long. Yep. That's going to take a while. Even, uh, <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah, a lot of <laughs> twiddling of thumbs there. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I.O. is very slow. right? It's much slower than CPU. It's much slower than, um, it's typically much slower. And then f specifically, disk I.O. is very, very slow. Yeah. Even with SSDs, it's still slower than running uh, and writing to memory, reading from memory, doing CPU work. CPU work. Uh, so ideally, what you want to do is you want to have uh, things like file reads or even uh, network uh, uh, network I/O. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you want to make it in a non-blocking way so that you can still do some other work. You can process other events. You can do other things, yeah. uh, and that's really where the power of Node.js comes in because it makes that so easy. Um, and the way it does that is by having asynchronous functions that take a callback. Right. Uh, so let's say we wanted to read that same file again. If we take a look at the screen, um, we're going to call read file instead, and we're going to pass in the name of the file. But here we're also going to pass in a callback that returns a buffer. So what Node is going to do is Node is going to execute this file, uh, execute this line of code. It's going to continue executing other code until there is enough things in the buffer for it to call the callback. Right. Right, so what it's going to do here is once it gets enough things in, in the buffer, it will call the callback and will print it out the screen. And then that way, doing it this way, you can be doing anything else at the same time, capturing anything else or another operation or yep. any, that kind of stuff. And all you care about is when is this? When am I getting this event? When is this callback being called? Yep. When can I handle it? So that brings up the topic of callback style <laughs> programming, right? Oh yeah. Uh, so if you're coming from another type of uh, programming. Uh, style is, say, imperative or, or declarative in, in other languages, uh, you may not be particularly used to callbacks. Um, essentially, 
when you have an event loop uh, that's so crucial, uh, especially like in Node, where uh, the event loop is the main reason why you want to run Node, right? Uh, you want to be able to handle all of this uh, concurrency. Um, event loops typically result in callback style programming. And uh, your end objective really is to break apart the program to its underlying data flow to the underlying I.O. that you're doing. So if you're building a networked application, you want to make every single uh, callback almost the same uh, length as the actual I.O. that you want to do. So that, you can, that way you can do uh, uh, other things and other callbacks that, are, uh, that don't take up as much time. Um, so you want to split up your program into small and small chunks until each chunk is mapped uh, to an operation with data. So you don't freeze the event loop on long running operations like disk and network I.O. Right. Uh, now, of course, Callback. callbacks within callbacks within callbacks might lead to something that. <laughs> hey, I heard you like uh, callbacks. Like, uh, yeah. Call back in your callback. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, quite quickly, you'll often find yourself um, writing code that starts to look like this. It's like the pyramid, yeah. uh, like a pyramid st structure, um, and it's not, uh, you know, fantastic. But uh, there are ways to counter it, and we'll let you uh, explore those ways. Uh, as you dive deeper and deeper and deeper into Node. Yeah, just, you know, it's more, just be aware that this might happen to you, and it's very natural um, because you're, you know, just trying to stub out what you're writing, and, and everything just kind of falls in. Oh, when this gets called back, I need to do this and this. Um, and then and before long, you're going to be like, okay, I can't handle this. I can't read it. It's not manageable. I, I can't follow what's going on anymore. Um, and so there's a bunch of demos that you can, or sorry, libraries that you can use along those lines to kind of help you with that a little bit. So, you know, don't, don't, don't be too worried that happens. Yeah. Now, I want to do some, some more coding, right? And uh, I've got another sample for you. Uh, and it's going to introduce some other interesting topics in uh, Node. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our folder 5 and then check out uh, our Hello World TCP uh, project. And here what we're going to try to do is we're going to do Hello World again, but this time using the TCP protocol. So uh, not HTTP. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'll maybe perhaps create a TCP server. Now, this will look familiar. Uh, it's almost exactly the same as the HTTP one. But in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to require net, which is uh, where all the TCP handling um, modules is. That's the module that you want to use. And we're going to call net.createServer. But in this case, our callback is going to take a socket. And what this socket uh, is going to do is it's going to give us an address, and it's going to be able to uh, receive and, and send data. Right. Right. So what we want to do, though, is we just want to send Hello World to anyone who connects. Uh, so our socket is only going to print out the, the remote address from where we got our connection from, and it's going to write Hello World to that socket. Uh, again, we'll assign this server to a variable and then call listen and give it a, uh, a, um, a host uh, where it's going gonna, it's gonna to run from. And in this case, it's just localhost. It's just home. Uh, and then we're going to get it started. So if I open up a command prompt, Right here, I'm going to close this server. We're going to go out, go into 05. All right, I'm going to call node server.js. All right, there it is. It's running at the top. In the meantime, I'm going to actually open up another command prompt. And I'm going to do that by right clicking, putting it here. I'll put it side by side so you can see what's going on. Uh, let's go back into our dev folder. Go into our TCP. And I actually want to create the client now. So before I actually run the, the, the code that we have, I'm going to walk you through it a bit so you can see, hey, this is actually a little bit different from how we did our, our server. Um, now at the top, you'll notice the same idea uh, require a module. Uh, what we're going to do here instead is we're going to create a socket. And then we're going to assign this new socket uh, to the client variable. And then we're going to tell that client to connect to 7000 localhost. That's it. There was no callback that we did here. Uh, instead, what we were going to do is we're going to say, hey, anytime the client gets data, then do something. Right. Right? Or anytime that the client gets a close, yeah. like someone closed the socket, do something. So basically, right? you're just listening to certain events there yeah, that so it's going to emit. So we've talked that, uh, about event-driven uh, programming already. Yeah. And in this case, this is a, a, a very simple example of <laughs> literally events, data and close, right? It's it, that's that's it's right there. Cool. Uh, and this is going to bring up this topic of event emitters. Right. So these are uh, node concept. It's a node concept where we have uh, these objects that are emitting events. All right? right. And in this case, the socket object is one of them. Uh, so now, if I actually run this code, I open up my uh, two uh, um, uh, command prompts. Yeah. I run client.js. What? 
we got a connection on our server from our own home. <laughs> and yep. uh, we, in our server, we sent back immediately uh, this data. Yep. Uh, on data, in our yep. client.js, we printed it out that said data hello world. Now, if you remember, if we look at our code again, the server.js file does close the connection right at the end. It calls socket.end, yeah. and that's going to call um, it's it, that's going to call the close event in our client, and then it's going to print out connection close, which you can see right here. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So event emitters. Let's talk about what actually happened here. Event yeah. emitters. Um, basically, event emitters allow you to listen uh, for events and assign functions or callbacks uh, to run when events occur. And uh, of course, each emitter can emit different types of events. So in our case, we saw data, we saw close, but there's a special um, uh, event that typically is available, and that's the error event. And all yep. it does is it, it lets you know when there's an error in your event emitter. Uh, if you want to read more, there's a couple of tutorials uh, on, the, on the screen right there or in the slides so you can check out and let's, uh, take a look at them. Now, of course, if we've got all these events and we, it seems like we've got this stream of stuff going on, uh, what is a stream? Can we actually use it to do something cool? Yeah, and you know what? What do you use them for, and and, and what context? And I think most often for me, reading or using streams is usually I'm going to be. Uh, maybe I'm like downloading something or creating a stream where I'm like just filtering that information in and like, you know, uh, a good example is downloading an image and, and piping it into, you yeah. know, a, a temporary kind of placeholder or that yeah. kind of thing. So there's a, a new concept called streams and it represents data streams, like yep. you said. So some IO stuff, right? Yep. Uh, perhaps network or disk IO, maybe even uh, streams of, uh, of data from a, from a message queue or something. Now, these streams can be piped together, which is pretty neat, uh, just like in Unix. So if you've ever used a, a, a Unix-based, um, I don't know how to say this, uh, I don't anything know, you, that has some You were miming Unix it concepts. pretty good. Yeah. You're like, you know, when you do this when to you this. Do this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It goes from one to the other. <laughs> so if you've ever used a, a Unix uh, type system, uh, perhaps OS X or Linux, uh, you've seen the pipe operator, the yeah. straight line that you can put in your, in your code and just move uh, output from one and sure. put it to input for another one. You can actually do the same thing with Node. So let's say that we wanted to read a file, package.json. Um, we can actually pipe it straight to a write stream that's going to rewrite the entire stream that is in package.json to out.json. Right, so it's just bringing it in and writing it out. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, now, we keep talking about all these modules and, and stuff like that, so how does it actually work? Yeah, well, I mean, Node.js has a simple module and dependency loading system. And so in that sense, it means that you can, you can create your own modules, you can use other people's modules, and just being able to easily install them, whether it be locally or globally, um, you know, you can start to use them. Yeah, and it's uh, very similar to the, I guess, Unix philosophy. Uh, we have the same type of philosophy in the sense that um, modules are typically small, and you, you want to write programs that do one thing and do it well. Yeah. Uh, in Node, you want to write modules that do one thing and do it well. Yeah, you see a lot of it for like um, working with APIs, right? Like uh, you're going to work with a Twitter API. There will be like a bunch of modules for that. You want to do something that's a, uh, you know, something working with date or time. You're going to have a module for that. So it is very much that concept of like doesn't do everything. It's it's, yeah. it's utility based and in your toolbox. Thousands and thousands of modules that you could use. Now, as we uh, mentioned a couple of times already, how do you actually load a module? Yeah. Well, you use the require function. Uh, you can actually give it the path of a file, so you can uh, require another Node.js file or even a directory that right. contains the module that you would like to load. And everything that is exported from that module is then put into a variable. So now let's talk about the Node package manager. Yeah. We, we, we like these uh, modules, and we know that there's a package manager that has all of this. Well, what is the NPM? Yeah, what is uh, NPM? <laughs> it's like every time you know you start working with Node, you're like NPM. What is it? Well, official package manager for Node, right? And so it's the idea that you know everything is listed there. There's a registry. You can find out. Uh, you know, you can go to the NPM site, figure out what modules you can get, um, and it's you know it does all the hard work for you. It bundles and installs automatically within your environment, and it takes care of all the dependencies. So if you are using a module that requires a couple other modules for whatever reason, you don't have to worry about all that dependency stuff and managing that, which we all know as things uh, change and move and get upgraded can kind of you know, be a little bit of, I don't know, hairy experience, right? But it handles all that for you. And so if you're looking at 
you know, working with NPM, which you will undoubtedly, you'll be using something along the lines in terms of usage, you'll go like NPM install, for example, and that allows you to install the module uh, name. You'll just need to know the name. Um, and then you can do the dash dash save, and that will actually list it, uh, you know, alongside your project um, in a listing that we'll get into called package.json. And we'll kind of keep all that sense of what you are using and when. Um, but again, you can, you can install these modules kind of locally, and you can also install them globally. So there might be something you want to use all the time, for example. Um, you know, so you'll use things like that or NPM update to update, you know, its registry listing so you have the most current, for example. Yeah, so how does it actually work? Well, uh, whenever you do an NPM install, it'll actually install that package, uh, which you can call a dependency, if it's a dependency for your project, into a node modules folder that sits locally right next to your package.json in the current folder that you're working with. Yeah. Now, if... Um, creates a little folder. Creates a little folder right yeah. there. Yeah, node modules. Uh, it, it actually does something interesting. It actually yeah. checks to see if there's a node modules uh, in the folder above all the way up to the root. And the reason why it does that, let's say that you're three folders deep into your project mm. and you do an NPM install there, it actually doesn't want to put it uh, another node modules in that folder. It'll actually right. put it in the, in the top one. Um, which uh, brings this interesting question, what about modules that we want to use all the time? Yeah. Well, in that case, you can actually install uh, with the global mode set, and that will make that node uh, module accessible to all the products that you have. Uh, and um, how can I install and from where? There's a couple of ways you can get it from a folder, from the tarball, from NPM itself, like mm -hmm. using the web. Um, whenever you do npm install the package name, it's actually going to the web. If you give it a, a folder or a tarball, it'll go there. Uh, and of course, you can specify uh, things like dev and optional packages that right. you might want, and that will all go into the package.json. So whenever you uh, download a node project, the first thing you typically want to do is npm install in that, in that folder. What that's going to do is going to read the package.json files for any of the dependency that, that project needs. Yeah. I'm going to go fetch them, yeah. put them in the local node uh, underscore modules folder, and... Uh, oh, it's going to go fetch them, yeah, it's go gonna... off, put them in a cart, bring them back, <laughs> dump I, it for you. Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, uh, it'll make the, the project ready for you. Yeah. And um, now let's actually take a look at what's in that project.json. It sounds very important, right? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's a listing of all of uh, the modules that you're going to be, or dependencies, I mean, we can just say dependencies at, at this point, that you are using in your project, and it'll list everything from the name of it to the version description. So you can just look at this, open it up, and be like, oh, I'm using 1.0165, I don't know, of this module. Mm -hmm. Okay, i got to be very careful if I'm going to update it or any of that kind of thing. And when you create a module, as well, you start to list those things along those lines, whether you know there's a, a GitHub repo, an author, and the name, the description, all that kind of stuff. And again, it's just a, a simple JSON format that just fills out all of those dependencies within your project. Yeah, and um, um, what are some of the popular node modules? Uh, I mean, there's, well, for me, it's a, I mean, I think there's like request, we've got underscore, we've got async, um, we've got uh, low dash commander, right, express. Mm -hmm. Um, I like how you just queued up that slide. That was beautiful, my friend. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, Optimus, CoffeeScript. I mean, there's a bunch of really popular ones, and you'll see when you go to use one. You know, just check out, like how active it is and how many people are using it or downloads, and, and that'll give you a good indication of, uh, you know, if you want to pursue something because obviously it's you know, snippets of code people put up, and if they're not maintained, you you know, at your own risk, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, typically, most of these uh, modules are on GitHub, so you can actually go check out the code. And, yeah. Um, and uh, good way to learn. We want to highlight two modules that are very, very useful, and they're extremely popular as well. Yeah. Uh, the first one is async. Yeah. And uh, essentially, what async does, it's uh, it's a utility module that right. gives you very easy, simple ways to make functions work. Um, in different ways when it's when they're asynchronous, right? Right, because when you have asynchronous uh, JavaScript, you've got lots of callbacks. Uh, perhaps you've got multiple functions that you want to run in, in a series. Well, it's a little bit annoying to have all of that uh, um, uh, pyramid of, of callbacks. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you want to run them in series. Well, async provides a bunch of functions that let you do that. Uh, and uh, I'm going to basically show some some of the code real quick right here. Uh, that first one at, at the bottom is async.series, so that lets you run an array of functions. Um, parallel lets you run all of these functions at the same time, and then when the results are out, it'll, or when the first one is done, it'll execute that callback that you specify. But there's two other powerful ones that uh, we use a lot, like map and filter. And basically what map will do is it will run uh, this, um, this um, 
function fs stat on every single uh, argument that's in this array, and it will return all of the results uh, in an array for each file. And let's say that you wanted to filter. Uh, well, filtering, it's, it's very similar in, 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 uh, in how it executes. It will run uh, all of this stuff, and it will uh, this fs exists function on all of these uh, files, and it will return it all in the results. And there's lots of other functions that async uh, offers. Um, another very popular module that uh, Stacy will walk us through uh, is the request module. Yeah, request is um, it kind of simplifies the whole way of doing any kind of HTTP calls. And you have to do this all the time. Maybe you're, you're getting a page, maybe you're getting a, uh, an image, that kind of thing. So you can see the structure um, listed here uh, on the screen. And um, I have a couple of examples that I can uh, very quickly walk through. And so I'm just going to open up uh, code on my desktop. And again, um, if we're looking at this, I have a bunch of examples in here. And you'll see that uh, at the very top, I'm just you know, including that request module. Again, I had um, installed it at some point, whether I've done it locally or globally. And I also am including FS, which kind of does all that file I.O. stuff. And at the very top right up here, all I'm doing is a simple request. And you just pass it the URL. And then you've got a callback. And it tells you, OK, I'm going to that URL. I'm going to get the response in the body from this page. And I can see, you know, was there a response uh, status code? You know, if there is, just log the whole body. If everything's good, and you know it's a 200, um, and it's just going to write back that HTML. And so that's the idea of like just you know grabbing the content off a web page very simply. Um, but I have a couple other examples here, and I'm just going to uncomment this out, and I'll run this one maybe in a second. Wait a minute. Yes, this, this was a good one. This has something to do with me. Oh, no. This one is one for you, my friend. <laughs> um, so you know, if we're looking at the bottom here. You'll see that what I'm doing is uh, I'm basically saying, OK, um, I want to create a, a write stream. I'm going to write an image, and then I'm going to go get that image. And I request this image, and I'm going to pipe it into this, uh, basically, this file that I've kind of this placeholder, this stream I want to pipe it into. And I can also capture when it's done. So I know that when this operation actually is finished piping it in, I have a sense of when that is going to complete. And so what I can do here is I'm going to bring up my command prompt. And I'm going to go into uh, GitHub. And I'm going to go into oops, uh, CD. This is where you get to watch me type, and it's really exciting. Sorry. Not prepared. CD node. And there we go. And now I'm going to do this. OK. So node, and then it should be app.js. OK, so it gives me, uh, writes back to the thing, OK, we've got the stellar pic of Rami. I've basically gone to the web. I've went and I've downloaded this pic of Rami that you see right here. I feel like maybe we should take a look at it. I feel oh, like no. it would be excellent to go and do I this. I actually don't know what this picture is. So it's all good. What? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, again, if you want to go, for example, and grab a couple pictures and download them locally, and you know whatever you might be doing, that's an easy way, and you can use uh, requests to do that. Yeah, and I see that you piped it into the the file stream, right? There. Yeah, I totally did the whole pipe right into it. Awesome. And uh, there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> so there's our, our request module demo. We have a couple of resources for you. Um, to kind of move you uh, along in terms of, of learning and other things that you can take a look at. We've talked about a lot of concepts in this first, uh, you know, hour here. And some of them, you know, you need to get a little bit maybe working with Node and building your stuff, and you'll understand how they come and plug and play and what you need to look at. But again, we've listed some resources. We've got the GitHub repo there. Um, really, if I think after this one hour, things that people should probably kind of look at, I would say, Understand asynchronous versus synchronous. Get a really good handle on that because, man, when you don't, it's just like it comes up at you and you're like, where did this come from? And all of a sudden, it's, it's a day of learning libraries like Q or async. Um, you know, get, get very used to uh, event emitters and, and how they work and, and NPM. Learn all the ins and outs of NPM. NPM is awesome. And then, and then come tell me, awesome. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, <laughs> You know, that's, um, that's all we have for uh, this first uh, module. And we're going to take a short break. 
and we yeah. will see you shortly. Yeah, and if you got yeah. any questions, please put them in the chat, and we will cover uh, some of these questions when we come back at yeah. the next module. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs>